Hello, I'm Brent Ferris from the Bearded Man Studios, and I wanted to show you RPC calls in this networking tutorial. So, I'm using the one from last time where we had the network view and we put the capsule uh, custom serialized script in it. So, I'm going to open up the custom serialized script and jump to the bottom of it. And to say that a function is going to be an RPC function, which is uh, stands for Remote Procedure Call, we put brackets and say RPC like that above the function. Now we can type the function uh, normally. So I can say public void uh, jump right. All right. Uh, so when we jump right, I'm going to call uh, transform dot position plus equals vector three dot right multiply by two. So it's going to jump two units to the right. So how do I call this function? I can't just call the function the way we normally do. I have to call it in a different way. So I'm just going to go ahead and blow away the serialization stuff because I just really care about uh, this RPC call. So what I want to do is say if input dot get key down uh, key code dot space. So if I press the space bar, I'm going to call the jump right. So normally you would call it jump right like that, right? Well, you don't do it that way with RPC calls. You use the network view, so you say network view. This is a component that's already on this object, so we say network view dot RPC. This RPC's first argument is the string name of the remote procedure call we want to call, so jump right would be the name. So in quotes, I'm going to put jump right. Now, the network player target is the target object that you're wanting to affect uh, across the network, and uh, this is kind of like a buffer. So if I said, uh, actually, I don't want to use network player target. Uh, so let's skip that one. I'll talk about it at a later time. What I want to use is RPC mode. So the RPC mode uh, is this uh, is the buffer I was starting to talk about. So the RPC mode is how we send it to across the network. So if I if you type in RPC mode, you'll get server buffered all all this stuff. So you you'll get uh, it's hard to see here. You have all all buffered others others buffered and server. So usually you want to do all. Uh, in in most cases, you want to include it on the server here. Say the server pressed this key. You want to include this action on the server, so you want to use all. If you used others, it would only happen on everybody else's but the server, the person who's calling this RPC. Uh, sorry, not the server. The person that's calling the RPC will not get this function if you say others. All buffered is everybody gets it, and people who come in late also get it. So if this is a function that's required to happen. Say you create a pumpkin in the middle of the in the middle of your scene for some reason. Uh, if you create the pumpkin on all, it'll happen against everybody. And if somebody logs in two seconds after you create the pumpkin, it will not be in their game. You want that giant pumpkin that's going to block everybody to be in their game, so you would use all buffered. So when that person joins, they will get that giant pumpkin in the middle of their game. Uh, so things like that are important for us to use. Uh, all buffered on. Now, this is a jump right. We're moving the character or this object, this capsule, to the right. It has no importance for people coming in late into the game. It only has importance for people that are in the game now. So RPC mode I want to choose is all. I don't want to do all buffered. Now the last argument is the parameters that you're going to be sending across the network. Now the parameters are the arguments that come into the function. So I'll talk a little bit about these in a minute, but for now we're going to use null because we're not sending any parameters. There are no parameters. All right. So uh, now that I have that, I can build this out. So I'm going to build this, build and run, overwrite my other one. Yes. Do 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 do. Play. I'm going to host. And then I'm going to connect over here. Connect. So over here, I'm going to press the space bar. And you see that RP, that remote procedure call was called on both platforms. Uh, so then we get to see it on both platforms. Now, like I said, if I said others, and then I built this out, just so that you guys know I'm not making stuff up, 
we like to deal with facts here. So let's play. I host here. I'll join over here. If I press spacebar, it only happens on the others. It does not happen on the guy calling it because I said others only. So you can see that the RPC mode is fairly important and it has to fit into your design. Moving to the right is not a design I want buffered and it's something I want to have to everybody so RPC mode all is the appropriate argument for me. Now I want to change this. I want to say I want to tell it how many units to move by. So I can say int uh, distance right and then just pass it in there. Now in this uh, in the parameters part I would say new object array and in here I'd pass in my arguments in order so if I said distance uh, string name or something or the name or something like that I would type in order I would say distance uh, would be three units no not, not call 32 the distance would be three units and the name would be Brent so I'd put them in the order that the arguments are in the RPC function. Since I don't need the string, I'm going to delete it. So now, if I go and build this, I'm going to jump by three units instead of two, because I'm passing the number of units I want to jump by. So let's play. Let's close this. I will connect over here, and spacebar. So now it's jumping by three units. So by the third time we press, it's off screen. All right, now to the final note about RPC calls. RPC calls only take certain types of parameters. These parameters are listed on Unity's website, but the ones that I remember off the top of my head are int, bool, float, string, so your basic data types, vector3, quaternion, a network view, and a network view ID. Now the very last thing that's very special and it's super important when you get into custom things like really custom classes is it takes in a byte array. This will allow you to serialize your class and pass it in as an argument into this uh, into this function. So you can serialize custom classes and send them across the network on, uh, over the RPC and deserialize it on the other side. Now if that sounds crazy complex, uh, later on in other videos I'll show you, uh, if, if I can get ever get to it, I will show you how to serialize classes, serialize data, and pass it across a remote procedure call. And some of my packages for the asset store, such as the uh, network scene sync, or, or network editor, so that you know multiple people can edit scenes at the same time. In that one, I needed to send data across as uh, byte arrays and not as individual integers and stuff like that because I was sending entire classes. I was sending the entire materials class, the rigid body data, uh, custom component classes, lighting information. I was sending all kinds of stuff and that had to be done through a, the byte array as it didn't support uh, classes like that. So basic data types and basic unity types like vector3 and quaternion are okay. okay. So with that you should know how to use these RPC calls. They are pretty awesome. Uh, you can use them even if you're not making a game and you're making software. You can you can use them in your software. Uh, so it's pretty awesome. Uh, and just play around with them and see where you get. Uh, let me know what you think. And until the next video, I will. Uh, I guess I'll see you then.